All right, so let's step into walking bass lines. Obviously used, you know, almost entirely in jazz, but then also in blues and, uh, you know, even a little bit of popular music and that sort of thing. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit of how to construct it and how to play it uh, over a couple of simple progressions for you. So the first one I'm going to start with is just a, a one to four progression. So um, we're going to do A7 to D7. And we're just going to create this little bass line between the two. So we're going to go... So what I've got there is I'm basically using a combination of sort of scales and chromatic leading notes to jump between the two. Um, I'm actually not playing a whole lot of chord in it, I guess, but the overall effect is that it does seem like you're playing two parts at once. So to start with, I have this A7 shape here. Keep that short. So I do the little upbeat. So, you know, going back to kind of thinking like a drummer, I'm kind of thinking like the ride cymbal, I guess, in this, um, that you would hear in a jazz sort of thing. So, da ding, 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 da ding, ding. So my little accent comes, da ding, 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 da ding. Nothing worse than saying ding, ding, ding over again. Anyway, so start with your A7. Then I jump back to here for the B. Then I do play my minor third in the bass here, which is kind of a little bit of a sort of blues jazz thing where the minor third often gets resolved to the major third, which is there. And then when I hit the D, I actually just stab out a little, uh, well, that's a full D9 chord actually there. And then I jump to the third in the bass of the D. To the seventh of the A. A little chromatic note again, which kind of doesn't make sense, but just sounds cool. So the overall effect is this. And then what you'll notice I'm actually doing there is just using a little kind of chromatic leading with the chord as well. So I have this little... So a little chromatic there, and a little bit of chromatic there. And that's the kind of thing you can kind of develop after a while with this stuff. As you get comfortable with the style and comfortable with the songs you're playing, you can kind of, I guess, expand them out more. And... And, you know, it's it's used, like I said, not just in jazz, but kind of all sorts of music, you know, even if you want a kind of little Stevie Wonder sort of vibe. Like... You can kind of do that there. Um, of course, your walking bass line doesn't actually have to be necessarily sort of chromatic and jazzy like the one I just played, but uh, going back to a little example I kind of used earlier with that sort of Stevie Ray sort of blues feel, you know, it has a kind of, I guess, much simpler walking bass line, which is the one, five, seven. So it's kind of just this little box pattern you get. So if I add that to an E9 chord up here on the seventh fret, I get this. So what I'm actually playing there is my open E, then a tap on the E9 chord, the B, tap on the E9 chord, the D, tap on the E9 chord. I am changing my fingering a little bit as I go, and then the E on the end with the E9 chord. So. So 
So on second look at that, actually, I'm not tapping between a, a couple of notes. So you've got a... So I'm holding the B there. On the D, instead of actually tapping the chord, I do just a little pull off, just to give it a little bounce in the bass before I hit the E. So it's very slowly for you. It sounds like this. And that's just such a great pattern, like you just can't help but move to it. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that you can then extend out to a whole blues progression. And 